In the name of our dear Lord God, the only living God, Jesus Christ, we from the Church of God in Christ Jesus greet each and every one of you peace. Our dear and beloved uh, listeners, firstly to all our loved ones, charity begins at home, to all our friends that are being picked by our Lord Jesus from every parts of the world and personally he is calling these friends of ours and he is putting him in his holy flock the church of God in Christ Jesus also to listen and study and receive the truth of the words of words of God from the Holy Scriptures you are being greeted by the Church of God in Christ Jesus and also to all who have uh, faith of our Lord God Jesus Christ and believe in him in the spirit and in the truth we are once more gathered by the Lord and he gave us once more this wonderful and peaceful opportunity of listening again to his Bible study number 8 that he personally have prepared in his throne in heaven for us to learn more about the secret of uh, salvations or the secrets on how we can attain the true life, the eternal life that he have promised those believers who will endure until the end or until their death here on earth or hopefully we all could uh, reach even the uh, final uh, end of times or the second coming of our Lord before we uh, continue further let us prepare ourselves, our souls, our ears, especially our respective Bibles, have it handy next to us. And uh, we will uh, bow down our heads and uh, kneel down our knees to the holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ and let us uh, put into his Hence, what we are going to undergo today or to the holy listening of his holy words which are the content of this Bible study number 8. Our dear Lord God Jesus Christ, Forgive us for disturbing once more your holy peace in heaven. For we are hereby bowing our heads and folding down our knees in your holy name, Jesus Christ. And we would like to praise thee first, your holy name. Glorify thee in the spirit and in the truth. And most of all, we all would like to thank you for all your uh, greatness, for all your loving mercy and the bounties and the life strength of our physical body that you have let us all experience during the past days of our lives. Our dear Lord, we thank thee to everything and we hereby also ask your kindness that if you have seen us erred, have done a lot of wrongdoings or wickedness, our dear Lord Jesus, we uh, beg thy holy name not to make it a hindrance for us not to attain or to receive the truth about our holy Bible study number 8. Our dear Lord, please forgive us of all our sins, not only us but also all our loved ones 
and most especially our friends, that you are continuously adding more every day in their numbers and gathering them all together in your church of God, in Christ Jesus, together with us, so that there will be more souls, more people, will glory and worship your holy name in the spirit and in the truth. Our dear Lord God, kindly use your humble servant's lips and mouth for us to listen unto your holy words and kindly pour the spirit of wisdom unto him that anybody who may listen may also receive the truth that will set every one of us free. You are the only living God, our pastor, our bishop, and our high priest of our souls, that you are still abiding in us and guiding us, teaching us, and cleansing our souls every time that we listen to your holy words. Our dear Lord God, all of these things we ask in thy holy name, especially the Bible study number 8. May you make it clear to each and every one of us. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Amen. Now, beloved brethren, friends, loved ones, and listeners, let us get our uh, Bible and let us open uh, for the Bible study number 8 that the Lord would like us to listen and to understand. Our Bible study number 8 is about the true new world order according to the Holy Scriptures. It is also known as in the Bible, the new and living way. We all knew that currently the world leaders, both religious and civil government leaders, like for example the top leaders of the churches in the world, Number one and foremost of all is the Pope of Rome and the number one leaders on earth government-wise is President Barack Obama and the European leaders. They are the high echelons who lead all people in the world. They are uh, currently are uh, forming a new world order and through the leadership of the Pope of Rome, this I read, this I heard, this I saw from YouTube, newspapers, radio, television, that they are in a process of uh, making the whole world a new world order. And the Pope of Rome have invited all the top leaders of the religions worldwide, even the uh, spiritual leaders of the tribal uh, uh, worlds in the mountains, in the desert, elsewhere, all over the world. And they all gathered in uh, Vatican, the Protestants, the Catholics, even the Iglesias. Are this the true world order based on the Holy Scriptures? Are this a diverse religious belief? Religious, uh, shall we say, uh, dogmas? Can they really form a new world order which according to the world leaders will give the whole world peace and contentment and progress, literally speaking. Before we uh, continue further, let us start asking the Holy Scriptures or our Lord. Our Lord, what is the current status of the whole world today as we are living now? Do the Holy Scripture have something to say about uh, the current situations we are experiencing? In Jeremiah the chapter 6 and the verse is 14, 
They have healed also the heart of the daughter of my people is lightly is slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace the truth and in reality this jeremiah 614 they have healed also the heart of the daughter of my people is slightly this is actually a uh, prophecy of prophet jeremiah some 760 years uh, ago before uh, the uh, manifestations or before uh, our lord jesus christ manifest into flesh this is uh, a prophecy that happened in 1948 when uh, the united nations have uh, proposed and uh, confirmed the giving of independence of uh, Israel to the Holy Land and establish them as an independent nation. This is actually a temporary uh, peace to the people or uh, daughter of God, which is Israel. And since then, it is saying, peace, peace, the, the United Nation is saying, peace, peace, even the League of Nations. Firstly, the League of Nations is the, the first world uh, order or uh, union, the League of Nations led by the Big Four, that first uh, uh, asked the whole world to have peace to uh, uh, stop fighting or stop the wars. That is why the preamble of them then was to prevent international cataclysm, to prevent war, and to maintain peace and order into the world. But even then, those were the days of the early 1900s. Even then there was no peace. The First World War exploded in the year 1914. Then, after almost uh, 20 years, the Second World War exploded. And after that, comes the United Nations that gave a slight peace or independence or establishment of the State of Israel. And after uh, a few years, comes the Korean War, the Vietnamese War, after that the diverse wars, and up to now, currently there is war in the Middle East again because of the Islamic State's radicalism. So therefore, beloved brethren and listeners, the situation nowadays in the whole world, there is no peace. And in Second Timothy, how do uh, even the apostles through apostle paul attested that there is really no no peace uh, in this earth during uh, these latter times of ours let's open the second book of timothy chapter 3 and the verses 1 until uh, up to 7 this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come this is exactly what is happening now. Too many killings, too many uh, uh, plunderings, corruptions, wars in diverse places. Not to mention the climate changes that uh, brought a lot of destruction to all the nations in the world. The tsunamis, the strong rain, the earthquake, the landslide. This know also that in the past days, we are now living in the last days, perilous time shall come, uh, which is the prime reason. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. I do not want to further elaborate anymore this uh, 
uh, praises from the Bible because this is actually in reality what is happening now. What else? People are without natural affections. We knew now that uh, the natural affection, for example, speaking of love, is a man to a woman, a woman to a man. But this natural affection has been changed already. It is now man to a man. That is why uh, the whole world recognizes the marrying of man to a man, a uh, woman to a woman, known as same-sex marriages, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. People are traitors in these latter times, heady, proud, high-minded, boastful, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, we all know this is happening. There are too many people who are uh, hypocrites. They are uh, pretentious to be uh, uh, God-loving people, especially religious leaders. But denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of these sorts are they which creep into houses. These people who, pre who are pretentiously trying to show others uh, through their hypocrisy, they, they show people that they are God-loving and peaceful, but yet they are the people that creep into houses. And they led captive silly women laden uh, with the sins led away with diverse lusts. These religious leaders are uh, more dangerous, beloved brethren. That is why we, we saw a lot of times leaders of churches that were uh, put into jail because they were proven to have kidnapped somebody, killed somebody, and uh, raped even uh, children, pedophiles or pedophiles. And we even saw a uh, church leader, his name he called himself as the most holy reverend so-and-so. But yet he killed his nine-year-old son from one of his concubines, he stabbed the boy brutally several times until he died and cemented inside a metal cabinet, box of metal, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And they are uh, the people that keep on trying to learn the Holy Bible, Doctor of Divinity, Theosophy in Letter, and yet they cannot explain the truth. And what they are doing, according to St. Paul, even in Titus chapter 1 and the verse 14, saying, Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandment of man, that turn from the truth. And in Romans chapter 10, as it is written, in Romans chapter 3 and verses 10, there is none righteous in, in the world we are living now on these latter times. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone on the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that do it good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With tongues they have used deceit. The poison of us is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So therefore the Lord God have answered our question, What is the current situation that we are experiencing? experiencing worldwide during these latter days of ours. So the whole world is destined to all hardship and its destruction according to the Holy Scriptures. So what then is the uh, plan of God to be the end of this world that we are living in now? Because no one is righteous, because no one is doing right and everybody is turning away from Him. In Matthew chapter 24 and the verse 6, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see, ye be not troubled, 
For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many people, the love of people to God shall wax cold. Just like the days of Noah before the first deluge, beloved brethren, so the Lord God have proposed to uh, destroy this whole world because no one is doing right. All men are wicked. And uh, the things uh, we are experiencing now, the hardness of our daily livings, together with the uh, destructions all around us, the wars in diverse places, the uh, climate uh, changes that brought us these uh, uh, tsunamis, the El Nino that kills the fish in the oceans and in the rivers, even the birds are dying and people are also dying because of the pestilences and earthquakes and different famines, this would be the end of everything for this whole world. The reason of which is because no one is righteous. And according to Apostle Peter, he wrote in the book of Peter, first book, chapter 3, verse 20, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. What do we know about the life of Noah? He and his family were the only righteous family that have uh, feared the Lord and never forgot to uh, serve God. And his family through Noah was called by God and asked by God to prepare uh, an ark uh, so that uh, before he will destroy the earth with uh, a strong rain coming from the heaven because uh, the sin or wickedness of man reached the throne of our Lord God in heaven. Noah was instructed to make an ark, him and his family. And while, while it is being prepared, Noah and his family is calling the attentions of his neighbors, his fellow men to help them and prepare the ark because a strong rain will be coming when this is already uh, prepared but no one heed no one hears them Noah while the ark was preparing were in few that is only eight souls even uh, only his relatives <laughs> Noah's wife Noah's children three sons uh, Shem Sham and Japheth and their respective uh, wives. They are only eight souls that were saved, but the people around them never listen. So as uh, what we are doing now, the Church of God in Christ Jesus, we are the smallest, we are the, the, the least, we are the uh, most, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, little... Uh, or none at all to the eyes of our fellow men, but yet we are trying to disseminate the message of God that the second coming is near. Let us all prepare. Let us all join together. Let us uh, 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 gather together in the body of Christ that He is going to save, which is the ark on these latter times. The spiritual body of God, the Iglesia ng Dios kay Cristo Jesus, the Church of God in Christ Jesus, that He is going to save. Read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 and 25. My beloved listeners, just like the days of Noah, nobody listened the same way. On these latter times of ours, very few will be saved by God. And what is the truth? According to another holy man of God like Prophet Daniel, 
that the second coming would be similar to that of the days of Noah. Daniel chapter 9 and the verses 26, the last part. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. Have we not experiencing flood all over the world now? I don't want to elaborate anymore to you. The end thereof of what? Of the whole earth shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war there will be war until the end also desolations are determined the whole world is determined to desolation meaning all people shall die my fellow brethren too many will die so what is the Lord's plan or proposal to this uh, troublesome, chaotic earth, old world that we are living now, or to all human beings that He created from the dust of the earth and He formed in His very own image. What is the Lord's, the Lord's plan for us? Isaiah chapter 65 and the verse 17 For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. God has a proposal actually in this very moment As I am speaking to you or preaching to you, our Bible study number 8, as per also according to our Lord Jesus Christ during His days, as He said, in the book of Apostle John chapter 14 and the verses 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go. To prepare a place for you. The God which is uh, our Lord Jesus Christ himself. He proposed to end this wicked old world that we are living now. And he is going to prepare a new world. This is what uh, these world leaders and the Pope of Rome are uh, speculating and are actually planning now to do to have a new world order it is actually our Lord Jesus Christ our almighty God who is foremost the first one who have planned proposed or proposed to himself to do a uh, To make a new world order and to change everything in this earth. In Isaiah chapter 14 and the verses 24. Can we stop our Lord God in uh, uh, doing the new world order? The Lord of hosts had sworn saying, Surely as I have taught, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. It will, it will not be stopped by anybody. Uh, you cannot do your own. The Pope of Rome and uh, Obama and all the top president, king and queen, queens of the whole world, you cannot uh, be compared to, to what God is doing now. Isaiah 14.27, let us read further. Isaiah chapter 14 and 27. For the Lord of hosts had purposed, he planned it, that he is going to change, destroy the old world and make a new world. The Lord of hosts has purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, who shall turn it back? Heaven and earth shall, shall perish according to our Lord Jesus Christ. But my word shall not perish. What are the words of our Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ? He proposed. He said even to his followers, In my father's house, there 
There is a lot of mansion. I will go up there. I will leave you for a while. And while I am there, I am prepare you your houses or your mansion. These are the new place for you to stay. We cannot uh, disannul his promise or his purpose. He planned it. He said it. Nobody can disannul it. What will happen to this uh, world we are living now? Is this really uh, going to be destroyed by God? While our Lord uh, Jesus is in heaven preparing for our uh, new world and new earth. In Genesis chapter 6, the verse is 12. Just like what Apostle Peter prophesied, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Just like the first deluge. The whole world is now also corrupt. On these latter times of ours, Romans, I read to you. Chapter 3, verse 10 to 18. And in Isaiah 24, 6, what is God going to do to this... Uh, earth we are living now therefore had the curse the board the earth therefore had the curse the curses of god the board the earth uh, what is that curse and they that dwell therein are desolate therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left the whole world will be desolate it will be burned by god it will be burned by god and only few shall be left. At least there are uh, is still uh, quite a few people, according to Prophet Isaiah, that will be left alive by God. Who are they? Who are these people that will be uh, left, according to Isaiah, on chapter 24 and verse 6? Let Apostle Paul answer the question. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and the verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. This is the second coming. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall be rise first. The dead in Christ shall be raised first. This is the second coming. In the second coming, we shall hear, if we are still alive, the trump of God. The Lord God will descend in heaven with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. On that second coming of our Lord Jesus, who, who are these dead in Christ that shall be risen first from their grave? Galatians chapter 3, 29. And if you are in Christ, you are the seed of Abraham and inheritors of the promise. If you are in Christ, Christ, who are the people in Christ? First Thessalonians chapter 2 and the verse is 14. For you, brethren, became imitators or followers of the churches of God in Christ Jesus. So who are these uh, dead people during the second coming according to 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 2 and the verse is 14? They shall be risen first. They are the seed of Abraham. They are in Christ Jesus. They are the churches of God in Christ Jesus. They are the followers of God, the followers of Jesus Christ. Why? Why uh, shall they be risen first? Romans 8.1 There is therefore no more condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who are in Christ Jesus? Church of God in Christ Jesus. They are not going to be condemned or be thrown to the hates of fire. 
And accordingly, because they leave it not in the flesh or in the works of the flesh, they leave it in the Spirit. What is the Spirit? The Spirit is none other than the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 6 and the verse is uh, 63. The words that I spoke to you are full of Spirit and full of life. So therefore the church of God in Christ Jesus, the followers who are in the church of God in Christ Jesus that live not anymore in the works of flesh but live in the words of Christ or the gospel of Christ, they are surely the first people though they are dead. They died serving uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. They will be risen first. And in chapter 4, verse 17 of Thessalonians, Then we, this is the answer to our question, Who are the few men that will be left? According to Isaiah chapter 24, 6, Therefore had the course of God devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are born. But there are few, there are few men left. Who are these few men left? Then which we are alive, chapter 4, verse 17 of Thessalonians, first book. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with this word so there will be few people just like the days of Noah's ark only eight men were left did not destroyed by the heavy rain or the flood on the first deluge likewise on the second coming there will be very few that will be left who are they they are according to Apostle Paul. Then we, we, where are we? Where is the Apostles? In the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12 and the verses 28, And the Lord God have put some into the church. Firstly, the Apostles. Secondly, the prophets. And the rest of the followers of Christ and what is the name of the church the church of God in Christ Jesus so therefore we that are in the church of God which are the few that are still left behind we shall be together with the uh, uh, arisen followers of Christ who were in their tombs already they will be risen and we will be together with them in a twinkling of an eye, according to the Holy Scripture, we shall be lifted together with them in heaven. So where therefore shall we be taken by our Lord Jesus Christ during His second coming? During the day when judgment will come to everyone, but those that died in Christ first in the church of God in Christ Jesus, though they are already dead, they will be risen by God. But those that will be left behind, although they are very few, they will be also together gathered and uh, shall be uh, brought up by God to heaven. Uh, what is that uh, place according to the Holy Scriptures? Revelation chapter tw 21 and the verses 1. Revelation 21 and the verses 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is what the Lord God proposed to Himself. This is what He promised to do. A new world. A new world order. And this is also what our Lord, Je our Lord Jesus promised 
in the book of John chapter 14 and the verse 2. In the house of my father, there's a lot of mansion. I will go there and prepare you your mansions. And when it already is ready, I will go down and I will take you so that wherever I am, you shall also be. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more, no more sea, no more earth. It was already destroyed by God. And on Revelation 21.4, And God, there already in the new world order, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, And there shall be no more death, Neither sorrow, nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, For the former things are passed away. There will be no more crying, no more sickness, no more hunger, no more crying, no more pain. We are already in the new world order, new world, new earth, new heaven. And how shall we be assured that we can get or we can go there to the new world? New heaven or new world, new world order while we are still on this earth. What is the holy message of our Lord Jesus to our Bible study number 8? In Hebrew chapter 10 verse 19, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, listen carefully, Having therefore, Boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Christ. There is, there is a, a uh, way that we can enter to the holiest. The holiest is, uh, that is the kingdom of God, the new world order. By the word or by the blood of Christ. What does that mean? In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Feed the church of God, which he or God purchased with his own blood. So what are we going to, to understand here? Having therefore, brethren, boldness. We must be uh, strong. We must be uh, firm. We must not be wavering to our faith or in our faith to enter the holiest by the blood of Christ. Uh, where is the blood of Christ? The blood of Christ is the blood that He used to purchase the church of God according to the Acts of the Apostle chapter 20-28. Therefore, we must be bold. We must be strong with a strong faith to enter the holiest through what? Blood of Christ, the church of God that He purchased with His own blood. And what is this? Chapter 10 and the verse 20 of Hebrews also. How? By a new and living way. The church of God in Christ Jesus is the new and living way that He consecrated for us. Why consecrated? He cleansed, He sanctified, He bought by His own blood. And through the veil, that is to say His flesh, that is why He was crucified in the flesh. His flesh signifies that when his flesh that he used in manifestation as a humble servant of God, when his flesh was crucified and died in the cross, there goes also our sin, our, our body also died with him in the cross, meaning to say he carried to his flesh our sin, he cleansed us with his blood, and this is the New Testament in the blood of Christ. 
And in 21 of the verse 10 of Hebrews also, And having an high priest over the house of God, uh, who is our high priest? Our high priest is not the Pope of Rome. We should understand, my beloved listeners, we cannot be uh, sanctified by the blood of uh, even thousands or hundreds of the blood of Pope. The Pope of Rome cannot clean even his own life, if even his own soul. Remember that. Uh, according to Hebrew chapter 10 verse 21, we have high priest over the house of God. Who is our high priest? Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, meaning only to say high priest, leader. We have a we have our highest spiritual leader. Who is that? Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the body, the church. And what is the church? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 14. For you brethren became imitators or followers of the churches of God. Which in Judea, why in Judea? It was in the capital of Judea, Jerusalem, in the year 32, our Lord built His church, according to Matthew chapter 16 and the verses 18, Upon this rock I shall build my church, and the church is none other than the church of God in Christ Jesus. What can we find in the church of God in Christ Jesus or the body of Christ? Let's go back to Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, according to Apostle Paul. And in Hebrew chapter 3 verse 6, But Christ as a son over His own house, Whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? And the house of God is none other than the church of God in Christ Jesus. First Timothy chapter 3 and the verses 15. So what is God advising us in accordance to our Bible study number 8? Let us continue chapter 10 verse 22 to 24 of uh, Hebrew also. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And what are the good works? In Romans chapter 7 and the verses 12, For the commandment is holy, the words of God or the commandment of God is holy, just and good. So we have without wavering, believing through the total obedience to all the commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is holy, righteous, and good. And what is uh, the most important good works that uh, the Lord God is expecting each and every one of us to do so that we could surely enter to the new world order? According to Hebrew chapter 13 and the verses 16, King James Version, but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for through those sacrifices the Lord is well pleased. We shall not forget to do good, follow the commandment of our Lord Jesus, and to communicate. What are we going to communicate? According to Apostle Paul, chapter 15, and the verses is 1 and 2 in the first Corinthian, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Amen. And so with this, our beloved listeners, 
We have concluded our Bible study number 8, the true new world order according to the Holy Scriptures. Although men in this latter times are trying to change the old earth or world that we are living in now because of its very troublesome and very chaotic and dangerous situation, no man, whether they are popes, whether they are uh, the best, most intelligent leaders, in the governments in every nations in the world neither any spiritual leader can change the old rotten world and turn it into a new world order full of peace and contentment compassion to one another and progress no one no person no leaders can change it there is only one almighty god our Lord Jesus Christ that can do it and he is literally speaking by now preparing this new world order new world system which is none other than new heaven and earth that he is going to provide us in his second coming and the only solutions the only key on how to enter this new world order is by his spiritual body the new and living way in his spiritual body the church of god in christ jesus this is where we are being invited and we are being called by god to let us all now prepare our soul in entering this new world order through his blood this is the only solution for us to be included in the new earth the new heaven within him we can have the eternal life and so before we finally conclude or part ways from the spirit let us bow down again and kneel our knees to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us have a few minutes of silence. Our dear Lord God Jesus Christ, please forgive us for further disturbing you in your holy peace in your throne in heaven. We would like to thank you again, our dear Lord, for the very peaceful hours. A very great opportunity for each and every one of us who listen to the Bible study number 8 that you have taught us. And we pray to thee, O dear Lord, that may your words be uh, thoroughly be born in our heart. And may this lead us into a further recognition, intelligence, and wisdom on how you would really care to take each and every one of us as much as possible to the new heaven, the new earth, your new system, the new world order. If you are still seeing some wickedness, sins and errors within our souls, before we finally close this Bible study number 8, dear Lord God, please forgive us of all our sins. And we beg thee to bless us your holy benedictions not only to us but to all our loved ones especially to all our friends and to all your true uh, ships that are scattered abroad who are worshiping your holy name jesus christ in the spirit and in the truth so through the humble servant of our lord jesus let us all receive the eternal love the eternal blessings of bounties for our daily living, the eternal hope for the eternal life in the new world order that our Lord Jesus is currently preparing for each and every one of us. The spirit and the wisdom of, of the eternal life might be blessed to us who are waiting for His second coming. And may God bless also our respective loved ones, homes, belongings, and may He guide us 
from now and forever with compassion to each and everyone, our fellow men and living inside and out of our respective homes. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Thank you very much our beloved listeners. Until our next Bible study, God willing, thank you very much to each and every one of you.